has won. Oh, yes, she is. He is the Prince of Peace. It is time to worship. Amen. Good morning, Philadelphia. We are here to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Do I have any believers in the house? How many believe that the Lord will truly make a way? His promises are yea and amen. So no matter what it looks like, no 
matter what it feels like, just see your problems. Do me a favor, get real close to a window if you can, and just visualize your problems leaving, going out that window, because God will take care. So let's sing this song of praise to Him, showing that we really trust and believe. Amen? I trust.
Amen. You are the God of power. And you are the God of war. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The songwriter said, don't stop believing. We're coming forward this morning to just affirm that in our hearts, that we won't stop believing in you, God. You're almighty, you're all powerful. Come on, somebody, just say amen right there where you are. You might be in your car, on your couch, or traveling wherever you are, but you're never ashamed. You should never be ashamed to say, I believe, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has brought us to another week. Hallelujah. He brought us from then to now, and for that we are grateful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our call to worship this morning comes from John 3:16. It simply says, "For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, come on, say I believe, there it goes, should not perish." but have everlasting life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. We come this morning, God, graciously bowing our heads in worship to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity to commune with you. Near or far, we know, God, you're right there in the midst of our praise, and we want to say thank you for that this morning, God. Be with us as we worship you today. Let the message rest upon our hearts. Allow it to be received in our spirits, God, and allow us to evangelize. Once we've got the message, don't keep it to ourselves, but give us the opportunity to tell the story. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our opening selection this morning comes from our hymn number 457. It says, I love to tell the story. There's a story in, in, in our song. There's a message in our music. Hallelujah. We love to tell the story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know tis true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else could do. I love to tell the story Twill be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love we invite you to sing with us this morning these words these sentiments of our hearts together the words will be up on the screen please join us in lifting up the name of Jesus this morning
I love to tell this story. I mean, love it, let us pray. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, Lord, we bow our hearts and our bodies before you this morning, not because you are a wonderful God, but because you are the God and there is none other beside you. And Lord, we want to tell the story of your love for us this day. Bless us, we pray thee, Lord, and, and give us the blessing that we crave from you. This is our prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to humbly come before you. We worship you, God. This is the time in the service where you take an opportunity to just stop what you're doing and be still in him. right there where you are say bow down bow down and worship him worship him say oh worship him oh worship him that's it come on sing it with us say bow down bow down and worship him Say, oh, worship him. Come on, let's process and say, bow down, bow down, and enter in. Enter in. That's it, that's it. Enter in. God wants to receive you this morning. Oh, enter in. Come on, sing that one more time. Say, bow down, bow down, and enter. Oh, 
profess it with your mouth. Come on, say, consuming, consuming fire, sweet perfume. His awesome, his awesome. Yes, it does. It feels, feels this room. Say, this is this. This is our place of worship. Keep going, keep going. Say this is, this is, we know, we know. This is the hour of visitation. Yes, it is. Say this is, this is holy, holy ground, holy ground. So Bow down to, to him. He is awesome, yes, he is. All powerful, God is. Oh, just bow down. Come on, humble yourself this morning. Bow down to him. There is none greater. Oh, he's awesome, yes he is. So just bow down. Spend a little time with him and worship, worship him. Come on, come on, commune with him today. Oh, to worship you I live. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. Come on, anybody feel like that this morning? We've been through a long week, but we come to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. Come on, we're worshiping God this morning. Come on, raise your hand and say, To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Right there where you're standing, right there where you're sitting, right there where you're driving, right there where you're moving, say to worship. worship you I live I live to worship you come on there are no truer words I don't know about you I'm saved healed but I worship him to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you can we have church this morning Come on, sing, say to worship, to worship you, God. We live just to worship you. opportunity just to do that today say to worship you we live to worship you we live we live to worship you he's been so good to me oh to worship you just to worship you I 
Amen, amen, amen. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live to worship you. Hallelujah. Happy Sabbath and greetings to one and all. The psalmist David tells us in his ninth chapter, and those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. When you walk with God, he will provide for you just at the right moment. Amen and amen. We are glad that you have joined us this Sabbath. We believe we are in great days to be serving Jesus and with even greater days ahead. To our visiting friends, we are elated that you have chosen to worship with us today. As we approach our high holy service of the Passover, we pray that you find our time together inspiring, meaningful, challenging, and perhaps even a little bit of fun. I encourage us within our Zoom channel to turn on our cameras. Let's lean into that discomfort, all right? And let's turn on our cameras so that we can have that sense of community. Our senior pastor is in the midst of a dynamic series of hope, healing, 
and understanding regarding the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you don't want to miss a week leading up to our March 26th Passover date. Just a couple of other items. Our 30-day mental diet has begun. So please see our YouTube page for mental diet updates. The link to connect to our lessons are tagged in our service posting on Facebook. Or you may visit, and you should have already subscribed, but if you haven't, subscribe to our YouTube page at PCUB hyphen Brooklyn, New York. Also, our 10-day cleansing fast will be beginning on March 17th, and it will, be, it will go from the 17th up until that holy day of the 26th. It's a great time for us to commune together, to be with one another, and, and to worship with one another as we join, join in, in fasting together. And of course, our Passover service will be held on, the, on Friday, March 26th, and it begins on this virtual channel at 4 p.m. sharp. That's 4 p.m. Eastern via Zoom, all right? I would also like to mention that, you know, we want to remember our midweek teleconference services, our Sabbath school, our prayer meeting, and our Friday evening living room sunset service a session. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the PYA hour of power, which begins at 4 p 4.30 p.m here on Sabbath, where we are tuning up the youth for the Passover celebration with pertinent discussions of the word, coupled with a viewing of a docu-series over the next few weeks. We certainly enjoy having you with us. Please feel free to reach out to the church for pr prayer requests, service accommodations, or counsel, or anything else you feel is necessary to continue to help to spread the good news of the loving presence of Jesus Christ. And please, as we fellowship with one another on this Sabbath day, know that you are welcome in this virtual place. All right? Let's sing it out. Lord, you know that you are welcome in this place. Amen, and have a blessed Sabbath. Amen. Welcome. We just want to take this time in the service to extend the warm hand of fellowship and welcome all our visiting friends. Amen. The song says, Sophia welcomes you. Good morning 
And at this point, we're going to recite together our affirmation. Uh, it should appear on our screens. Together, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. O almighty God, thy will be done this day. Today is a day of pleasant surprises, prosperity and fulfillment. I will continually give thanks for this wonderful day and blessings shall follow blessings health shall follow health prosperity shall follow prosperity miracles shall follow miracles and wonders shall never cease i believe i receive i do believe amen so let it be god bless you all Happy Sabbath to everyone. At this time, I will let you know why we celebrate Women's History Month. Women's History Month is dedicated, is dedicated month to reflect on the often overlooked contribution of women to the United States history from Abigail Adam to Susan B. Anthony, Sojourney Truth, to Rosa Parks. The timeline of women's history milestone stretches back to the founding of the United States. The actual celebration of Women's History Month grew out of a week long celebration of women contribution to culture, history and society organized by the school district of Samoa in California in 1978. Presentations were given at dozen of schools, hundreds of students participated in a real women's essay contest and a parade was held in downtown Santa Rosa. A few years later, the idea had caught on with, within community school district and organization across the country. In 1980, President Jimmy Carter issued the first presidential proclamation pro, pro, de declaring the week of March 8th as National Women's History Week. The U.S. Congress followed suit the next year, passing a resolution establishing a national celebration. Six years later, the National Women's History Project successfully petitioned Congress to expand the event to the entire month of March. This brings me to the woman I chose for Women's History Month. Dame Mary Eugenia Charles, born May 15, 1990, through September 6, 2005, was a Dominican politician who was prime minister of Dominica for, from July 21st, on July 21st, 1980 until June 14, 1995. The first woman lawyer in Dominica, in Dominica, she was the Dominican's first to date only female prime minister. She was Dominican, I'm sorry, she was the second female prime minister in the Caribbean of the uh, Netherlands Antilles. She was the first woman in the America to be elected in her own right as head of government. She, is, she served for the longest period of any Dominican prime minister and was the world third longest serving female prime minister behind Indira Gandhi of India 
and Sir Marvel Vander Vandernaik of Sri Lanka. She established a record for the longest continuous service of any woman prime minister. Daughter of Josephine and John B. Charles, Eugenia Charles was born in the fishing village of Point Michaels in St. Luke Parish, Dominica. Her family was considered part of the colorist bourgeoisie descent of free people of color. Her father was a Mason who became a wealthy land owner and had business interests in the export import. She attended the Catholic convent school of Dominica, then the island's only girls secondary school. Afterwards, Charles became interested in law while working at the colonial magistrate court. She worked for many years as an assistant to Alistair Forbes. Charles attended the University of Toronto in Canada. Then move then moved to the United Kingdom to attend the London School of Economics. She was a member of the sorority Sigma Gamma Rho. She passed her bar and returned to Dominica where she became the island's first female law lawyer. She established a practice specializing in property law. Charles never married nor had children. In 1991, she was made a Dane, commander of the Order of the British Empire. Charles began campaigning in politics during the 1960s against restriction on press freedom. She helped to found the Dominica Freedom Party, the DFP, and was the leader from early 1970 until 1995. She was elected to the House of Assembly in 1970 and became opposition leader in 1975. She continued service after Dominica gained full independence from British rule in 1978. Charles became prime minister when the DFP swept the 1980 election, the party first electoral victory. She took over from Oliver Serpent, who had taken over only the year before when mass protests had forced the country first prime minister, Patrick John, to step down from office. She additionally served as Dominica foreign minister from 1980 to 1990, Minister of Finance from 1980 to 1995, and a chairperson of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 1981, she faced two attempt coup d'etat. That year, Frederick Newton, commander of the military of Dominica organized an attack on the police headquarters in Rousseau, re resulting in the death of police officers. Newton and five other soldiers were found guilty in the attack and sentenced to death in 1983. The sentence of five accomplices were also commuted to life in prison, but Newton was executed in 1986. In 1981, a group of Canadian and American mercenary, mostly affiliated with white supremacists and the KKK group, planned a coup to restore former to restore former Prime Minister Patrick John to power. The attempt, which with the conspirator of code name Operation Red Dog was thawed by the American federal agents in New Orleans, Louisiana. It was soon, it was soon fallacious dubbed the Bayou of Pigs, referring to the failed Bay of Pig invasion year before Cuba. Charles became more widely known to the outside world for her role in the lead up to the United States invasion of Grenada. 
In the wake of the arrest and execution of Grenadian Prime Minister Maurice Bishop, Charles, Charles then served as chair of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean State, appealed to the United States, Jamaica, Barbados for the intervention. She appeared on television with the US President Ronald Reagan, supporting the invasion. Journalism Bob Woodward reported that the US paid millions of dollars to the Dominica government, some of which was regarded by the CIA as a payoff for Mrs. Charles' support for the US intervention in Grenada. Charles and her party were considered conservative by the Caribbean standard. However, American observers consider many of her policies to be eccentric or even leftist. For instance, she supported some social welfare program. Other issues that were imported, important to her were anti-corruption laws and individual freedom. For her upcoming, in, <coughs> excuse me, for her upcoming instant on this and other issues, she became known as the Iron Lady of the Caribbean after the original Iron Lady Margaret Thatcher. With popularity declining during her third term, term Charles announced her retirement in 1995. The DFP subsequently lost the 1995 election. After retiring, Charles undertook speaking engagement in the United States and abroad. She became involved in the former US Jimmy Carter, Carter Center, which promotes human rights and observe election to encourage fairness. On August 30th, 2005, Charles entered a hospital in Fort de France, Martinique for a hip replacement surgery. She died from a pulmonary embolism on September 6th at the age of 86 years old. She is the person who I chose for Women's History Month. Thank you so very much and enjoy your Sabbath day. The song we're about to minister to you says, God's been so good to me, I can't tell it all. It's a real simple song, so sing with us this morning, please. Say, God's been, God's been so good to me, I cannot, I cannot tell.
Praise the Lord, everybody. It's such a wonderful thing to be in a, together, worshiping together on the Sabbath day. And I'd like to uh, just take this moment as we return to God, his tithes and our offering to make an appeal to everyone under the sound of my voice. Uh, one of the things that uh, the church is doing is making sure that we keep materials going out to all the saints and materials that you can share with your loved ones and with your friends. Reason being that one of the things we have to realize is that we're all still apart. And uh, we know that many of you, or you may know people that are going through a rough time. And the materials that we give here, whether it be Sabbath worship service, whether it be prayer meeting, whether it be the 30 day mental diet, whatever we do, we would like you to share it out to friends and family. We work hard every day to try to make sure the material goes out to you and to keep your eyes focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lot of confusion in the world at this time and many people are not sure what to make of what's going on. But we know that if our eyes are fixed on Jesus, no matter what, if the storms are raging around, we will be okay and safe on the other side. And this is one of the reasons why I appeal to you from time to time to give to the ministry because the ministry is what keeps a lot of people grounded. And, you know, I always read a, a, a text out of the book of Amos from time to time where the Lord says, behold, I send a famine upon the land, not a famine for lack of bread or for thirst of lack of water, but for hearing the words of the Lord. And we do not want to ever be in a spiritual famine. And this is one of the reasons why we constantly are given and given and given more material to you and saying, go to the YouTube channel come on the Zoom meet, come here, so we know that you or other people in your family or in your circles may need to hear the word of the Lord at this time. A lot of churches are still not fully open, and there's a lot of people that haven't heard, really haven't really taken the time to hear the word of the Lord in this last year. So we ask you to support the ministry because what we do does cost a lot. And we still have to maintain our buildings. So there are three ways that you can give to the ministry. You can give through mail at P.O. Box 642, Rockville Center, New York, 
1-800-985-1570, which is the original way. Or you can give through our mobile app with the hashtag PCUB. And also you can give online with via Zelle at PCUB, Sabbath Cathedral at gmail.com. And at this time, you know, I would just like to give a word of a quick prayer. Lord, I want you to send out your spirit and bless all of us here as we worship together. We pray that this day a word will come from you that someone under the sound of my voice needs to hear. We know, oh God, one word from you can change everything in someone's life. We thank you for this blessing, and we thank you for allowing us the privilege of worship this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and have a blessed Sabbath. Holy 
For rendition. May God be happy with all that we do in his name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, saints. Let, let us let us just pray a moment before we begin this spoken word. Father God, let your Holy Spirit flow through each word we speak at this time. My prayer is today, Lord, that this message will conquer sinners and comfort saints. I ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, give me utterance, I pray. You know I cannot do it without you. I ask that you just use me as your instrument this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Saints, uh, this morning we're going to speak about something that has been with me for a while. I, it's a thought that was planted in my mind way back in the early 70s. Several years ago when my husband and I went to a convention in California and heard this very erudite minister preach on this, on this subject. And it touched my heart then, and it, has still, it is still with me. And it's like, it's, it was like a visual, you know, the scarlet thread to our redemption. Uh, I just love the way he was able to take something that could be very complex and make it simple. And that explains to you my great love for poetry because I find that in the art of poetry, that poet can take something that is complex and make it simple and make it beautiful. And so today I'm going to speak to you about that wonderful plan of redemption that runs through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, one plan. And by the grace of God to show that God is consistent, God is just, God is in love with his children. Did you not hear that opening, uh, uh, the call to worship for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. There is a scarlet thread that runs through the Bible and it is binding, that thread is the binding that holds the pages of the scriptures together. That great scholar thread is the redemption of Jesus Christ. He purchased our redemption on the cross of Calvary. 
And throughout those 66 books, we will find it there. This whole thing, the plan of redemption, AKA the plan of salvation, AKA the atonement, it's a love story. What grabs me about this love story is how God can through the labyrinth of humanity, uh, well, ne he never loses the sight of that thread. It is steady. We sang at the beginning of our service, I love to tell the story. The chorus goes like this, I love to tell the story. It will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Why do we want to tell it? Because he, he has woven it as a thread from Eden to the New Jerusalem. By this time, you're ready for our sermonic text. So I'm asking you to please turn with me in your Bibles. I know we'll be on the screen. Those of you who do not have this, your Bibles, read it on the screen. But when, you, when we come together, it would be so much better if you, I, I love to read the scripture from my own Bible. E even though the screen is there, I always take my Bible with me. When I come to PYA, I still bring my own Bible with me because I, I love to see it for myself. I underline my notes. I, I make a little note to remember. So um, whatever you have with you right now, just turn with me to Genesis 3, chapter 3, verse 13. That's the beginning. And the next uh, text will be Revelation 5, chapter, chapter 5, verse 9. But right now, if you have, you can read out loud. It will be on your screen. Uh, you can read out loud. Uh, you won't disturb anyone because the host has muted you. So just read with me. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the first promise in the scriptures that the Messiah would come and redeem God's people whom he lost, who lost their way in Eden. Now, our uh, uh, other text is Revelation chapter 9, chapter 5, verse 9. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. Revelation is the last book in the Bible, right? And here it says, and they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, and every nation. I say, thank you, God. All right, notice it didn't say uh, for the blacks and it didn't say for the white. If you are in a kindred, Whatever your kindred is, whatever your tongue is, what, whatever your people, and whatever nation. That's how God talks. That's how God deals. And so we had Genesis and we had Revelation. So this is, this is the, how the story begins. Uh, and all these people who knew, uh, remember, um, God created the, the, the world and placed our forefathers, Adam and Eve, in, in a garden, everything. Before he placed them there, he provided for them. 
And that is still true. God is still providing for his children. If you are hungry today, it is not because God did not provide. He has provided more than enough for the many billions of people in the earth. Uh, what may have happened, maybe some greedy people have hoarded, but God has provided. And so um, he provided for Adam and Eve in, in a garden. And um, he said to them, I have provided this place for you. you uh, I don't know, the Bible doesn't say millions of trees, but I'm saying because God is an, is an abundant God. So everything he does is abundant. All right. So th there were trees in abundance, fruit trees in abundance, vegetables in abundance, everything in abundance. He said to them, of all these trees in the garden, you may eat whatever, soursop, sugar apple, whatever. But this one tree, this tree produces the knowledge of good and evil. I don't want you to touch it. I don't want you just to eat from it. That's, that's the only restriction. Uh, but we all know the story, say, um, because we were taught in Sabbath school, how Satan came and beguiled uh, Eve. Eve um, passed it on to, uh, to Adam and they disobeyed God, bingo. Um, Everything changed after that. Prior to that, God and man had a relationship where every day, or whenever they, he would come and, and visit with them and they would commune with each other. And it, it, was, it was a regular thing. But from the time that happened, a, a wall uh, came up between them. And that's when uh, God turned to Satan and said, he's going to put enmity between him and, and the woman. And from, from then on, things change. And, and so, from, uh, remember, they went out and they, when God came that day to worship with them, they, they were hiding. And he said, well, what happened? You you ate of the tree, and they said yes. And we discovered that we were naked, and so we got some fig leaves and covered ourselves. And God said, "No, that will not do." So He got an innocent animal. Remember, the the offering has to be innocent. It's an innocent animal, and He He killed it and you know, got the skin and made clothing for them, covering for their body. From that day, any time we've sinned, in order to get rid of it, we must offer a sacrifice. And the sacrifice has got to be blood. And... Um, so they pass that down from to their children. So we remember the story that Cain and Abel came. Uh, Abel pr produced his sacrifice to God, uh, a, a blood sacrifice. Abel, uh, Cain didn't do it, and we had we had a problem. He was banished, and it went down through all the generations. My point is that through all the generations. Noah did it. Remember when Noah came out of the ark? Uh, the first thing he did was build an altar. And he had animals to, to, to offer an, uh, on the altar because remember he took all the animals with, with him. And um, Abraham, Abraham um, did it as well. And uh, Abraham stands out, you know, the billions of humanity, but every now and then one, one, one of, uh, of us stands out for some reason. Abraham stands out because of his faith. And uh, 
to this day we have everyone claiming Abraham's faith. The, the Muslims uh, claim Abraham as, as their father. The, the, the Christians claim, claim Abraham as theirs. The Jews claim Abraham, Catholics, everyone uh, claiming Abraham because his faith stood out so. Okay, then through, then through the, all these years that followed, the prophets came one after the other and they lifted up their voices declaring that a Messiah would come and to redeem his people. Now, um, every time uh, a lamb was, was, was slain as, as a sacrifice, they were pointing toward that Redeemer coming. It was coming this way every time, all the way through to humanity. That's what was happening, was declaring that the Messiah would come. Uh, right now uh, in Sabbath school, we're studying the book of Isaiah. And if you read Isaiah, Isaiah spoke about his first coming and his second coming. He spoke about his, his death on the cross. Uh, listen to, th to this. Um, but, but first, let me tell you, 750 years before Christ even showed up, all right? Before Christ came to Bethlehem, 750 years before that happened, Isaiah was there telling the people, reminding them, because remember, it comes, the thread is still coming through. And he's reminding them on that thread that the Messiah is coming, that he, all that he would do. And uh, this is one of my favorite verses because this helped to save my life that I'm here today by the grace of God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised, he was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of his peace was, was upon him, of our peace was upon him. And these are the lines I love. With his stripes, we are healed. Somebody under the sound of my voice today is ailing and you need to reach out to him because his stripes are still healing. His stripes are still healing. With his stripes, we are healed. All right. Uh, I've got to tell you this. I, I read this some time ago. A, a young converted Jewess, daughter of a New York rabbi, tells this story. This is her story. She said, my father taught me to read the Bible in Hebrew. We began in Genesis. When he came at Isaiah, he skipped the 53rd chapter. I asked him why. He said it was not necessary for Jews to read that chapter. I became more curious. I asked him who it was for. And he said, for the Christians. Yeah. I asked him, well, what is the Christian Bible doing in our Bible? Well, he became very angry and told me to be quiet. He again said it was not necessary to read it. I wondered why God would put unnecessary things in the Bible. So I copied the 53rd chapter of Isaiah and carried it in my stockings for two years until we came to America. I looked at it at night and every chance I could without being seen. When I read that, I thought about the letters that we write to God every year, when we should look at it morning and night and in between. But look, she, she continues, I took better care of that paper than people do with their money. 
But through reading this wonderful chapter, I was led to accept Christ as my savior. And I was walking in New York one day and heard a lady reading this chapter. And she explained that it referred to Jesus Christ. It satisfied me completely. I say amen to that. Amen. All right. God is just. Uh, well, what, why the scarlet thread? Because he wants his children back. We were lost in sin, and the only way to get back to that Edenic state is to be redeemed. And the price is not US dollars nor British pounds. We sing all the time, what can wash away my sin? And then we answer our own question, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow, that thread, that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Today, it is not necessary to kill a lamb because the lamb of God came. He came. He was crucified on Calvary's cross. Now, when we come, we must still accept that sacrifice that was made, just like on the other side, the Adam and Eve side, they had to accept it as a promise. Now we accept it as having taken place, but it's the same thread. That is the, the theme that this message is trying to convey. It's the same thread. When Jesus came, he didn't um, invent a new thread, a, a new message, a new plan of redemption. It's the same one that was laid before the foundation of the earth that, that covered Adam and Eve and, and is covering you and me today. And it's covering the last man that before the trumpet sounds, if he's a man like, like, like the thief on the cross who's saying, Lord, remember me, he will receive that the benefit of what Jesus did on the cross. And, you know, while I was preparing this message, it, it, one, it came to me, you know, Jesus was here on earth and every time he he spoke, he was teaching, he was comforting, he was healing, but everything he did, there was, a, there was a lesson in it. And he gave a parable, the parable of the vineyard. You will find it in, in Matthew, I think Matthew chapter 20, uh, where he, um, some people, he, this man, he had a vineyard and he started hiring, he started hiring nine o'clock in the morning. Some people came nine o'clock. He said, okay, they had a set wage, okay? Then some came at noon and it's the same wage they, that he, he paid. Some came in just before closing time and they received the same wage. And uh, naturally in the, in the natural, like, you and I, if we said, look, you know, how could we get the same um, pay that this guy just showed up five to five uh, and he's getting the same pay. But God, Jesus was trying to teach that the plan can be hacked up. It's not part of the plan for Adam and Eve and part for, for Johnny over here. It's the same plan. And it's the same plan, it covers, the same blood covers us, the same blood that was shed. Remember when Adam and Eve had to offer a sacrifice, Abel, Abraham, Isaiah, whoever offered a sacrifice, it was always a blood sacrifice. 
And that blood is still available to us today. Whatever we do, um, who, who will benefit? I had to think here, who will benefit from the blood? It is so those who are at the crossword road in their lives today, looking for an answer, the blood prevails for us. That thread that came through from Genesis is available to the man who, who, who is at the crossroads today. Maybe the blood is there for those who maybe have left the church because somebody hurt them. The blood is still available today. The blood is still there for those who have nothing good to say about anything or anybody. That blood is still available to us today. The blood is, is for those who are spiritually blind and maimed or deaf. Because remember, that's what Jesus did when he was here. The blind came and they, were, they, they, they received their sight. The deaf were made to hear. Today we may be blind, spiritually blind, but I want to say to you that thread that is there from, from Genesis is still available to you today. It's available to you and to me. It, whatever, you know, I, I, um, how your thoughts go when you're, you're preparing a message. And so I, I went and I looked up on, on Google, um, what kind of blood, what are the blood types, you know? And um, Google said that there are eight main um, types of blood, you know, A, A, is A, and then A plus, B and B plus, and so on. And then I sat back and I realized that the blood that Jesus covers us with covers every single type, whatever your blood type is. So whatever your sin might be, that blood is covering it today. So if there's someone under the sound of my voice, my beloved, I prayed before I, I prepared this message. And I asked God that someone under the sound of my voice who might be hearing this message, who has, has cried out to him for answers, who maybe left the church and is and feels like a wounded soul today if you hear this message the blood god wants you back and he's saying to you whosoever will covers you it covers me and so i i hope that you will receive the message and respond to him. We th there's a way you can respond to us. There's a chat right now on this Zoom. Please, please um, make your wishes and your desires known on the chat. We will contact you. All right. There's also you can you can. We just by uh, PCUB Sabbath Cathedral gmail.com. You can call us 718 773 4808. Whatever it is, if, the, if God has spoken to you through these simple words, because it's not my words, the Holy Spirit may be speaking to someone. I believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to someone today. And he's saying, I want you back. Hear my cry. It is for you that I suffered on that cross. It is for you that I placed that thread 
to run from Genesis to Revelation so that wherever you came in, if you came in to, to, to faith in Genesis, praise the Lord. But if you're in, at the revelation of your life, if you're the end of your days, if you're what, wherever you are, God is waiting to hear from you. Please reach out. And by God's grace, his, his Holy Spirit will give us the words to, to speak to you, to pray with you, to um, lead you to Christ this morning. And this is, this is what this message is all about. God wants his children back. It is redemption is the word. And why do we all need redemption? Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he said the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So if you hear his voice this morning, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Answer him. Amen. Father God, you know the vessel that you used this morning, totally unable to win anyone. But Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit takes whatever it is and you use it to win the hearts of men and women. All of us here, Lord, who have responded to you at some time in our life was because the Holy Spirit spoke to us and touched our hearts. Lord, we know that you've gone through all of this just so you could redeem us. And you want to redeem us because you love us. We take your word when you say that you, that you promised us eternal life through Jesus Christ. And Lord, we accept your promise. We accept your gift. We accept your, 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 your suffering and we're now putting our hearts on the altar. Amen. 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 Pastor said to make your request known. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
that last part one more time. Say, more love to thee. Anybody feel like me? We want to give him more love to thee. He is where my help comes from. Say, word we truly were blessed today a word that was plain and concise that tugged on the strings of our heart the blood is efficacious and we need to love the Lord for giving his self for us this is our earnest plea more love to thee, O Christ. More love to thee. I want to thank everyone for being with us and worshiping with us today. We want to thank the Lord for sending us that message through your past pastor, the Scarlet Thread to Atonement. That's word for thought and we have been fed from on high. Eternal Father and our God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for visiting us today. Thank you that we have been fed from on high. Now the God of patience and consolation grants you to be like-minded one to another according to Christ Jesus, that we may with one mind and one mind, mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is our prayer. This is our, our desire, O Lord. Be with us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like, I, we want to thank everybody for being with us today. We want to make some uh, announcements, some reminders. Our 30-day mental diet has begun. You can see our, our uh, schedule on YouTube. Of course, you go to PCUB, Brooklyn, New York. That's our YouTube channel, PCUB. Brooklyn, New York, and you will see daily each one of the messages, the diet for that day. Uh, the link to connect to our lessons are tagged in our service postings on Facebook, or you may visit us and subscribe to YouTube page at PCUB Brooklyn, New York. Uh, by the way, when you go there, we want you to remember to give us a thumbs up and to share the uh, lesson, uh, share, share the diet with a friend or family member. Our 10-day cleansing staff, our 10-day cleansing fast will begin on March 17th through March 26th. Our Passover service, I want you to keep this in mind, will be Friday this this year 
March 26th, we start sharp at 4 p.m. via Zoom. Please remember our midweek teleconferences as well. We have our Sabbath school every Sabbath morning at 10, 10 o'clock with Dr. Thomas. Our prayer meeting is Wednesday, are on Wednesday nights uh, uh, via our teleconferencing. And on Friday evening, our living room sunset session is every Friday evening at 7 p.m. So join us and uh, stay, stay with us, okay? We're traveling through this holy, high holy time of the year together. Keep your head up, and we hope to see you next week. God bless you all, and stay tuned for some announcements. See you next week. Friends and visitors, thanks so much for being here with us today. We are so blessed to have you worshiping with us this week. One thing we truly value at Philadelphia is community. And whether today is your first time or Philadelphia has been your church for years, truly the best way to get connected with our family and start meeting others is through our weekly prayer meetings. Our weekly prayer meetings take place each Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. and are led by our senior pastor, Dolores Jeffries. To join these meetings, connect by phone at 701-802-5473 pin number 3086058 pound we invite you to join us each and every friday evening at 7 p.m for our welcoming the sabbath services to join these services connect by phone at 701-802-5473 pin number 3086058 pound our Sabbath School adult classes begin every Sabbath morning at 10 a.m. To connect to these classes, connect by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058-POUND. Children's Sabbath School also takes place at 10 a.m. via Zoom. The meeting ID is on the screen below. Our young people's meeting and Vespers will begin each and every Sabbath afternoon at 4.30 p.m. through 5.30 p.m. To join our young people's meeting, connect via Zoom. The meeting ID is on the screen below. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at Facebook and Instagram at Philadelphia Church PCUB. For prayer requests and inquiries, connect via PCUB Sabbath Cathedral at gmail.com. Our recently added Mindful Mondays are posted each and every Monday on our YouTube channel at PCUB Brooklyn, New York. Start your day with words of encouragement from our ministerial leadership. And remember, our greatest glory is never falling, but in rising every time we fall. We're just so glad you're here. If you did come prepared to give, there are a number of different ways you can do so. You can send your tithe directly via mail to P.O. Box 642, Rockville Center, New York, 11570. Our tithe cash app is cash tag PCUB. Or you can also send your tithe electronically via Zelle to PCUB Sabbath Cathedral at gmail.com. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than ever before. Thanks again for being with us, and enjoy the rest of the Sabbath day.